Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to be walking through activity 8-4 titled Recovering a File. This is from the MCSE slash MCSA guide to configuring advanced Microsoft Windows Server 2012 R2 services in preparation of exam 70-412. In my edition of the book, this activity begins at the bottom of page 304. Um, so all we need for this activity is a single server. I'm going to go ahead and use my domain controller as the book walks you through it on the domain controller. Um, but really you could do this on any server. Um, so a few things you need to have set up. Obviously you need something to back up. Um, so I use my document share here. It has a couple of documents and a random file with a little bit of data. In this case it's just the Explorer executable. Um, once you have your documents you need to install the, the backup feature. Um, you can do this from PowerShell with this command. You can do it through the server manager by adding the feature in there. Um, once you've done that, um, it does not require a reboot to install, but if you uninstall it, you will need to do a reboot. Um, so you get that installed, and then you'll open up the backup um, console. Um, one thing that I would recommend if you're going to be using this instead of any of the alternatives, um, create a schedule. It's fairly straightforward. Um, it'll do it once a day or more than once a day. Um, you can't specify, um, you know, run it Monday, Wednesday, Friday. If it's going to run, it's going to run every single day. Um, you can do the full server. You can do custom selection. Hit add items. Um, so especially if you're using a domain controller, the system state will be especially important. Um, and then I'd recommend just go ahead and grab everything on the C drive, the local data storage drive as well. Um, the bare metal is kind of like a very, very minimum. Um, it's kind of the, the boot up of the operating system and stuff like that. Very basic. The system state will also include um, your domain information. So if you only have one domain controller and it crashes, you can restore the domain back to this um, backup point. So you won't lose your entire domain. You'll only lose, you know, maybe a few hours of changes on your domain. So it's not a perfect recovery option, but it's definitely better than nothing, and it comes included on a server, any server you get, 2012 R2. So if you're not using anything at all, think about adding this in. It does take a little bit of storage, but it's worth having some kind of backup operation available. Um, that being said, if you work for a company and you can afford a better option, it's always a good idea to look into more advanced backup features and software. I'm not going to recommend anything specifically, but do a little bit of research. Um, find something that will work for your organization. Because while this is better than nothing, there are options out there that are way better um, at customizing exactly what you need for your environment. Whereas this is kind of simple, it's very basic. It works, it's better than nothing, but there are better options out there if you can afford them. Okay, so that being said, um, either create a schedule if you just want to test it to kind of see how it works, run a backup once. Um, again, make sure you have an additional um, drive for your backup data. Don't save it to the local data drive, the C drive, don't save it there. Have that external drive or something hooked up that you can test with. Um, run a backup once. We'll run through that really quickly. Um, because I don't have a schedule, I can't run my schedule. Um, so I'm just going to select different options. Again, I'm going to go with the custom. If you try to do full, it'll do everything in this checklist here. Um, obviously, my spare is where I'm saving my backup data. So if I do a full, it tries to include it. And then it, it'll ask if you just want to remove that from the backup. You say yes, and then it formats it. So if you already have backup data, you'll lose it setting up your schedule. So set up your schedule first, and then if you need to, go and do a one-time backup for testing. Um, so for mine, I did a one-time backup. I just went through the C drive, through my doc share, um, and I think, it, yeah, so the two files, the one EXE, and I backed those up. Um, once you've done that, let's go ahead and just run through that again. It'll ask you to specify your destination, and this is where you need to have some kind of external drive, somewhere where it can save the data. Um, if you have a CD drive and you don't mind you know, burning through a CD or a DVD, um, 
that's always a viable option. Once you confirm, it'll go ahead and create the backup, depending on how much data. Um, I think in my case it took like 15 seconds. If you're doing a lot of data, obviously it'll take quite a bit longer. Um, okay, so that's kind of setting it up and getting it going. Um, now we want to go ahead and test to make sure that that backup um, will actually be able to restore the data if it's lost or if a user deletes a file and then remembers that they still needed it um, on a share or something like that. So we're going to go ahead and delete this document. So there, my user just deleted it. It's completely gone. I cannot recover it from the recycle bin. Permanently deleted. So now I want to go ahead and do a recovery from this server. So it knows the most recent backup. Um, if you have multiples, then you'll have, you know, the dates will be in bold black like the 17th is there. Um, since it's past midnight, uh, today is the 18th. So the 17th is my only available backup. So we'll, we'll roll with it. I only want to really recover that one file. I don't need to recover an entire volume because I don't have an entire volume backed up in this case. Um, your backups can do um, virtual machines. Um, so you can even do those over networks. Um, if you have clusters, um, like a multi-site cluster, um, you can do the Hyper-V to back up and restore um, even over different subnets, different locations, stuff like that. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and go with my files and folders, expand this and make sure I can get down into my doc share. And then you can select multiple, you can select a single, I'm going to select the one that, I, that was deleted, hit next. I want to recover it to the original location. You can specify a different location if you want. Um, this section, if you select everything in the directory, um, your options are to create copies of anything it finds a duplicate of. You can have it overwrite with the older versions, or you can have it not recover anything that already exists. So this, will, this last option will only replace things that have been deleted. It won't overwrite any files that have been modified or anything like that. So I think in most cases that's probably going to be your best option, but there may come times when one of these might work a little bit better depending on what you're doing. Um, restoring um, ACL permissions, usually a good idea, um, but if you notice that the user keeps deleting things and you're having to do this over and over, um, you might want to modify your permissions for that user a little bit. Another option, instead of doing a full backup like this, is the shadow copies. I'm not going to get too much in detail into that, but that is a little bit quicker than going through a full recovery like this. Um, so once we have everything set up, we're only recovering the one document in this case. Hit recover. Um, since it's such a small file, it won't take very long at all. Again, if you're doing gigabytes or terabytes of data for some reason, expect this to take quite a bit longer. And then we can come back into my doc share, and the file's back. Um, so that's kind of the basics of it. If you have shadow copies enabled, um, you can do shadow copies here. And you can even do it from a directory level here, and then you can surf down in um, to get multiple files from within a directory that way. If you don't really like the Windows Server backup option and you'd rather go with the shadow copies, again, it's better than nothing, but you really should have something better in place. Um, you can do a lot of the shadow copies um, basic commands from PowerShell. Um, it is VSS admin. Um, and so there's a bunch of different options here. You can start um, shadow copying a specific volume. Um, you can add a new storage association for your shadow copies. You can list the existing shadow copies, um, things like that. Um, and then once it's enabled, you can do it all from within the Windows Explorer to actually go into the properties, previous versions, to restore those shadow copies. Um, I think that pretty much covers everything from the book, at least, plus hopefully a little bit of extra information. Um, thanks so much for watching. As always, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please feel free to leave them for me below. Thank you again for watching, and I hope to see you in my next video.